Okay, so welcome to the Yoga Teacher Collaborative. Whether you are watching this live in the Facebook group or whether you are dialed in to the Yoga Teacher Collaborative podcast, I am so delighted you are here. Today we are exploring creative sequencing using the meridian lines. This also works for nadis or sen lines as well. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Laura Green. I am a yoga teacher, a teacher trainer, a business mentor for yoga teachers, an author of teaching chair yoga, and actually a Thai masseuse. That was a very, very long time ago I trained in Thai massage. But that was where my love of energy lines in the body kind of really came on leaps and bounds. So, so today we are discussing creative sequencing to inspire you in your yoga practice, your yoga teaching, using the energy lines of the body. Now, there are many different energy lines. If you are coming from the yoga lens, it is the nadis and the nadis that have the flow of prana through the body. If you're looking through the lens of traditional Chinese medicine, we are exploring meridian lines that are moving the flow of chi through the body. Or as I said, you know, I've done a lot of Thai massage. Thai massage, it is called the sen lines. And still it is about moving the sacred flow of energy through the body. Now, in my yoga teacher training journey, my first training was back in 2010, and that was in Ashtanga yoga. And then I also trained to teach seasonal yoga with Sue Wood, which I think many of you um, know that fabulous human being as well. And in seasonal yoga, we were learning a lot about traditional Chinese medicine, Qigong, meridian lines and flowing with the seasons. So that's when I really first started to learn and make this connection and then explore that in my teachings for very many years. And then obviously it was training as a time seuss where we're really working on the energy lines in the body, the sen lines, the moving energy. Now, what are energy lines in the body? What are meridians? What are nadis? Nobody can agree. <laughs> and you know what? That's okay. They're subtle lines of energy in the body. And however we experience it as an individual or whatever our gateway in intellectually for understanding the material, it is all fine. And when I teach, I try to come from two lines, a line, I shouldn't say line, that's confusing, two approaches an approach of, yes, exploring the subtle energy of the body and really starting to notice what is happening for you. Is there something happening? And then the approach of imagine as if. So that we're connecting with the body in a different way. So it doesn't really matter if you believe the energy lines are something really physical in the body. And that there are actually these lines physically through which energy is moving, and that we haven't been able to find them in regular modern science, because obviously it's dealing with the flow of life force energy. And so much of energy is in the unseen. You know, thinking about breath. We can't see our breath, yet we completely believe in the breath. And prana is just a more subtle flow of that. So I don't need to be able to physically dissect the lines of the meridians from the body to know they exist. I can still really strongly believe in a physical experience of moving energy through these lines. Or someone's gateway could be totally metaphysical, or it could just be that it's a really interesting concept through which to experience a different approach to embodiment. You know, so many people come to yoga up in that thinking mind, disconnected to the body, and that using these lines as a way to connect, to embody, could be really powerful. So I, especially when I'm teaching, I have my own beliefs, but when I'm teaching, I try to leave it quite open so that people can connect with these physically, metaphysically, or just through imagery and embodiment. Each person can have their own journey. So some 
a, a, a little side note on that is there's a really interesting correlation between the connected lines of fascia in the body and the meridian line. So I teach two courses. I teach a course on the meridian lines where we go through five of the lines in great detail. And then I teach a separate course on the, super, the, the connected lines of fascia in the body. And I always notice when I teach these two courses that there is so much correlation. Like one of my favorite um, meridian lines in the body is the urinary bladder line. And that's the whole kind of back channels of the body, kind of from the back of my neck, down through um, the center of my back, down over the back of the legs, the hamstrings, the calves. And this maps over super well with the superficial back line in anatomy education. So maybe there's some correlation between the connected lines of fascia and these subtle energy lines in the body, maybe. Now, I personally don't find the need to really like make a scientific connection because through working with the lines and teaching the lines, I have had and felt powerful experiences. Like when I teach Thai massage and we massage the urinary bladder line, every time I teach people to do a massage on the urinary bladder line, so massaging the hamstrings, massaging either side of the spine, then I ask my students to swap pairs and at that point, whoever was massaged always has to run out of the room for a week. <laughs> and that is working on that urinary bladder line. It makes me chuckle every single time. But when we are working with the lines, we're remembering this is subtle. It is about the flow of prana or chi. And if you're teaching movement, I don't think it's essential that you have an incredibly precise understanding of the meridian lines. So every meridian line has a place it starts in the body and a place it finishes in the body. It has a rough area of the body it flows through. And then there are very, very precise points on that line that are key points for the chi. Now, if you were an acupuncturist, of course, you want a very precise understanding because you want to be using acupressure or placing that acupuncture needle on very precise points of a line. But when we are teaching movement, we're not anywhere near so precise in a stretch. I can't stretch just a millimeter area. Instead, I'm stretching a whole kind of aspect of my body so my understanding as a yoga teacher doesn't have to be quite as precise. So you can dip your toes in with this. Now, there are many meridian lines. I tend to focus on 12 key ones, and they can be paired together. They can be paired together in different ways. The meridian lines, the lines of connected energy in your body, also have an associated organ and the lines will be called by their organ name. So the heart meridian line, the lung line, the stomach line, the gallbladder line. They're associated with an organ. Then the organ and the meridian line is associated with a season. So as we really feel right now, this shift into spring, we're coming into the paired organs of the liver meridian line and the gallbladder meridian line. That is the organs of spring. They have an associated element from the five elements. So like earth, air, fire, wood, metal, you know, the associated elements with them. And they have a healing sound. So when you think about the bija mantras that we get in yoga, the seed mantras like om, you have these associated sounds from traditional Chinese medicine that go with the meridian lines as well. So for instance, I said the liver line is one of the lines associated with spring and the sound associated with the liver line is shu. So when you think of that like the Bijan mantra, we can start adding in the associated sounds as chants within the practice. So 
Let's start by having a little look at one of my favorite lines, which is the heart meridian line. Now, when I am sequencing a yoga class or being inspired by this, I take a very set approach to this. Um, this is my approach. This is my recipe. I am very happy for you to take this recipe. We are all family here and cook it yourself. Sorry, my landline is ringing. Hopefully that will stop in a second. So would be so kind as to type my family recipe into the comments. That would be really useful. So the first thing I do is say today's class is inspired by the heart meridian line. This is a flow of energy in the body. You might just imagine it. It might feel more metaphysical for you. But this is what we're exploring today. So I'll give an introduction. Then I'll physically explain the line using my body as a map. So I'll say the heart meridian line, I'm just gonna change screens and check my arm still in sight. The heart meridian line is coming from the heart and it comes through the armpit, down the inner seam of my arm and to the little finger, okay? So the heart meridian line, I'll repeat it, is flowing from the heart, down through the armpit, down through the inner seam of my arm and to the little finger. Okay? So I'll introduce the theme, step one. I'll then demonstrate where the line is on my body. Then I'll begin the yoga class by normally centering and connecting to finding still positions such as seated, closing the eyes, bringing the awareness to the breath, landing in it. And then I'm likely to place the hands near the organ that I'm working with. So if I'm thinking of the heart, I'm going to place the hands on the chest. If the class is inspired by the gallbladder, I'll bring my hands into that area. If it's inspired by the kidneys, I'll bring my hands into that area. So you know, students are getting to make a very tangible physical connection with their hands and the organ of focus. And you know what? We take our organs for granted. Many of us don't even know where in the body our organs are until there is a problem. When there's a problem with our liver, we learn where the liver is. When there's a problem with the gallbladder, we learn where the gallbladder is. We take the body for granted. So just allowing your students to place their hands in the region of an organ and take a moment to center to connect, to show loving appreciation for that organ that is helping keep you alive and living and thriving. And then the next thing I'll do is get the students to massage that line. And it'll be more like a soft swoop because this is subtle. So let's do this together. Bringing your hands to your heart. I'm gonna go center of the chest. I'm not too anatomically focused here. Bringing the awareness to the breath. Breathing into your heart. And just take a moment to be grateful for your heart, for beating today and for giving you this sacred human life to live. And extending out to your right arm, keeping your left hand on your heart, you're gonna massage this energy line. So with your hand, massage across your chest to your arm. Slide down the inside seam of your arm and to your palm, to the little finger, sorry. Then from the little finger, massage back up the inside seam of your arm, through your armpit to the heart, then swap hands. So hand to the heart, extend the other line, massage from the armpit, down the inside seam of the arm to the little finger, and then back up. Now, once we've done that, we'll add in the breath. Okay, so let's breathe in with this. Inhale as you massage down your arm. Exhale as you flow back up. And you could change that to throw it the other way. You could inhale here at the heart. Exhale, flowing down the line. And inhale back up. And then in class, I just repeat this a few times on wherever the line is. So it becomes a breath-based movement meditation. And then I'll often come to a 
pause. So for us, if you're sat on the floor, lower your arms down, fingertips to the floor. If you're standing or walking, just let them hang down. If you're in a chair, just let them hang down. Then I teach to close the eyes and come to a subtler breath-based meditation. So it'd be imagine inhaling into your heart, and as you exhale, imagine the energy from your heart flowing down your arms. And then simply repeating that, breathing prana chi energy into your heart. And like beautiful rivers, let that energy flow down your arms into your fingers. And then in a class, I'd repeat that a few more times. You can repeat this on your own later. So let's recap on that family recipe. First thing I do would introduce the class. Then I would explain where the line is demonstrating on my own body. Then I would get my class to begin, center and connect, close their eyes, come to their breath, place the hands on the associated organ, give a little bit of gratitude to that organ. Then I would take them to massage that line on their own body. Then once they've massaged the line a couple of times, they feel confident where it is. They can close their eyes and breathe and massage the line, finding a movement and breath meditation. Then I'd return back to stillness and just more subtly breathe the line. Now at that point, you could introduce the associated emotion if you'd like. Every meridian line has an associated emotion. And when we start to move these lines, we're moving any stuck emotion in that. Now, again, you can believe that to be physical or just simply by the power of intention. My intention is to clear and cleanse that emotion. Then that is my intention. That is the experience I would have. Then I would begin to lay it in my asana. Now, what I would do if I was lesson planning would be get a piece of paper, I know where that line is, so think of that heart line, and I would just scribble out on the piece of paper every single yoga pose I can think of that stretches, moves, engages, or strengthens that region of the body. So think with the heart meridian line, what is stretching across the chest, across the arms, big expansive arm movements, side bends over to the side, that yin pose where you lie on the front of your body, bend one elbow in and take kind of broken wing, if you know what I mean. Um, and you think, what are all of the poses? Clasping the hands behind your back, rolling the shoulders, opening up there. All a uh, cobra with the arms wide, lifting up onto fingertips. So I'd have a really big brain dump. What are all of the poses I know that connect that line? Then I'd probably weave in maybe half of them depends how many I found I don't want I still want the whole class to have a fully rounded flow to it so I'm not going to make every single pose must be a heart meridian line pose you know I just weave in a good kind of 60 percent of them and then even in other poses that don't necessarily look like they're stretching that line I could still bring in the imagery so imagine like warrior one um, and the heart meridian line is connected with the fire element and summer. So as I bring my arms up, I can breathe into my heart, warming fire. And as I exhale, imagine the flames rippling up to my fingertips. So even when it's a pose that's not something I've noticed is really stretching that line, I can still layer in that experience. Then I think of what stretches. So again, Imagine we're in the class, we've centered and connected, we've breathed gratitude into that organ, we've massaged the line, we've then done a breath movement meditation with that line. We've then come to stillness and just breathe the line, maybe cleansing the emotion of that line. Then I'd layer in some stretches. So say for this one, I would keep one hand on the floor, bring my other arm out, up, over, into a side bend, feeling that energy from my little finger all the way down into the armpit and then coming over. Then saying, for instance, the sun salutations, 
I'm adding this flavor in as I inhale, taking the arms broad, really reaching up through the little finger, swooping the arms out wide, diving down, and really connect that little finger. It's gonna change your energy. Bringing the fingertips to the floor as you lift up into like a half lift, feeling the underside of the armpit strong, pulling the heart forward through the arms. So even though that's a half sun salutation that you do in every class, suddenly your students are experiencing it very differently as they're directing their awareness more keenly to the chest, the armpit, the inside seam of the arm and the little finger. And this kind of stuff brings so much more variety to your teaching without having to really broaden your asana repertoire. So explain the line, massage the line, breathe the line, then start to move and stretch with the line. In yoga poses, you could add in visual imagery that's connected to the meridian line you've chosen. So for instance, again, talking about the heart meridian line, it's summer, it's fire. So what is the energy? It's heart fullness. It's um, gratitude. What? How can I weave that imagery into the other poses? And then I can weave in the Bijan Mantra, chanting in the pose. So the Bijan Mantra for the heart is Ha. So imagine that could be something like added to a warrior flow, added to standing, added to seated, anywhere. I could have my hands on the heart. Inhale, exhale, as I reach my arms out, I could chant ha, like you might chant om. So it could be ha, as I open my arms out wide, and then exhale, wrapping my arms, inhale, wrapping my arms around. Exhale, chanting ha, broadening through my fingertips, and then wrapping back round. So again, you could layer in the chant to asana. Or as you come to meditation at the end, you could silently be inhaling and exhaling, imagining the heart, just a breath out. <sighs> okay, so you can put so much to weave in here from the element, heart, fire, summer, the sound, where it is in the body, breath-based meditation, self-massage. There is so much inspiration here. So I'd like you to have another little go thinking about the liver meridian line. So the liver and the gallbladder are the paired meridian lines and organs associated with spring. So if you wanna take this into your um, lessons over the next few weeks, over the spring equinox into April, this would work really well. Now this line is slightly more complicated. So again, I would introduce Coming into spring, we're working with the liver line today. You could work with gallbladder line the next week, or you could do them together. This is going to boost our energy so that we're coming into harmony with the awakening of the season. Then I would show on my body where this line is. Now, it is a little bit more complicated. So it's coming from the big toe. <laughs> I know on a podcast you can't see, but it's coming from the big toe the inside nail. I've got a skirt and tights on. I'm still going to try and, oh, that's a leather sock. I forgot. Big toe inside of the nail. And it's going to flow up over my foot. And then it's coming to the inside. So it's inside of the car, inside of the thigh. So think all of your inside leg stretches. Janu Shashasana is a really good place to see this. Butterfly pose, Bhadapunasana, wide-legged forward fold, standing wide-legged forward fold, um, gate pose, uh, goddess squat, all of these inside leg poses. It's coming from the big toenail up over the top of the foot, inside leg, so inside of your calf, inside of your thigh, up over the hip flexor, then a little bit up over your abdomen, and this line actually finishes on your sixth rib, just below the nipple line. So sixth rib. So it doesn't come up into the upper body, like the heart meridian is all up in the arms. This is coming from the big toe, inside calf, inside thigh, 
hip flexors over the abdomen and just to the sixth rib. Obviously, you've got two of them on the left and the right hand side. So again, you'd show that on your body. Then in something seated with the legs easily stretched out, maybe Baddha butterfly pose, you'd get your students to start to massage that line on their own body. So massaging from the foot, up the inside of the calf, up over their abdomen and to their ribs. And just get them to repeatedly massage that. Then with their breath. Then you'd have them breathing into the liver. You explain where that is, show it on the body. Thanking the liver for all that it does. Then you could start to layer in some movement meditations that's bringing energy to that line. Then you're starting to come up into your salutes, your standing flows, directing people's awareness to the inside of the leg. So in Warrior two, spiraling the thighs back and apart, feeling that stretch in the inside of the hips, broadening through the abdomen. And then you could layer in imagery. So if you're going to be working with the liver line, if this is inspiring you for a trial, said liver line is spring and it is the element of wood. It's this pushing up, this strength, this rising, this pushing up. Think about how the little daffodils spend so long in the soil and then they've got to push on up from that soil. They've got to push up through the obstacles to then come to the light and then blossom and bloom. It is also considered and called the grand architect in traditional Chinese medicine. And it's called that because it's about being the architect of our life's dreams. So we have a new moon this weekend, new ideas, that all works quite well for next week. So it's the grand architect, the designer of our life. If you, if you are the grand architect of your life, what are you designing? What are you building? What is the legacy that you're leading? What are you pushing up and through? So liver lines, really strong. And then the associated um, emotion. I'm careful how I introduced this. The associated emotion and the negative capacity that we're cleansing here is anger. Those of you that are old enough might know the British expression, my granny used to use it, that you look a little bit liverish, or they're a bit liverish, which would mean you're a bit angry, okay? So it is just cleansing of anger. And feeling anger and expressing anger and noticing anger isn't something that's kind of feels that socially acceptable in our world, yet there is a lot of anger and there's a lot of repression of our anger. And when we repress anger, that's when it becomes explosive and directed in non-productive ways. Whereas traditional Chinese medicine sees all emotions as a function. So anger is normally saying that a boundary, a value, a moral of ours has been transgressed against. So, you know, something is going against our boundaries and it's going against our morals and it's going against our values. And the purpose of anger is to make us pause, to notice that, to connect with our breath and to take aligned um, response, to stand up, to be of action, to make change. But when we keep repressing anger, repressing anger, repressing anger, that's when it can explode out and we burn the house down and then go, oops, I didn't mean to do that. So, you know, anger is shouldn't be something so taboo if only we could learn to work with it responsibly. That was an unexpected rant. <laughs> okay, where were they? So, yes. The associated emotion with, with the liver is anger. So you could use less powerful words. You could talk about kind of resistance, frustration, less charged words, and anger. So you're not having to just label it as anger. So the, 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 the breath, the meditations, the work on this line is going to cleanse that so we can be more productive. We can be the grand architect. What is the life I'm designing? You can have that strength of rising energy of the wood element. We can come into alignment with the seasons all by connecting with the liver meridian line and the gallbladder. So gallbladder is the other paired organ of spring. This one is a bit more complicated. So it comes from the side of your eye. 
up over, so you kind of think temple side of the eye, up over the side of the head. And then here it's kind of coming down the back of the neck just a little bit. And then when you're getting kind of here into the trapezius, coming over the front of the shoulder, then I just like to think it comes down my side body, but it actually does zigzag down my side body. But I can't stretch my side body in a zigzag way. I'm either stretching my side body or I'm not. There's a stretch down the side body. And it comes a little bit towards the front of the hip, but then down the side of the leg, down the sides, I think iliotibial band, side of the thigh, side of the calf, and then it finishes in the fourth toe. So that would be things like um, gate pose or side angle, where you really push down the outside edge of the foot, you have this strong stretch across the side of the body. And you could have someone's hand on their hip, slide the hand up the side of the body, up the side of the neck, up the side of the head to then extend the arm into side angle. So you could change how you're transitioning in and out of poses inspired by the meridian line, stroking, touching, feeling, sensing that line. And then in the parts where you feel the stretch, imagine energy flowing, like rivers flowing. So again, in side angle, you know, I can inhale and imagine the exhale flowing down the side of my body, side of my ribs, side of my leg, side of my calf, and down into the leg. Then the associated chant for the liver, did I say, was shu. So as I'm aware, gallbladder doesn't have an associated chant. There's only six healing chants um, of Qigong. My liver is shu. So I'm going to pop back into the Facebook group, those of you that are live, just to see if there's any questions. Okay. Yeah, fabulous. Thank you for taking notes, Lauren. Love you, my lovely. Always forget when I'm doing it live from Zoom, I can only see the comments that most recently came in. Okay. So I hope you found that interesting. I love it for my personal practice. I love it for teaching, especially, you know, sometimes there just isn't something in your mind that you want to teach. Sometimes as I've been going through the week, things have inspired me. I know where I'm going, but other weeks I'm just blank. And then when I'm blank, I like to go to the meridian lines because I know as soon as I picked one, a well of inspiration will come because I've got the element, I've got the season, I've got the emotion, I've got the sound, I've got the body parts. So it can really help me when I'm in a little bit of creativity funk. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I do teach a course on this. And of course, I would love to delve into this with you with more time. We spent half an hour going on this today, but I do a five week online course called Energize You yoga and the meridian lines. It's amazing for personal practice. I teach you all of the lines. We do two a week, so you'll get through 10 lines. We look at where it flows. We look at the elements. We look at the emotions. We look at the energy, the meditation, the chants, and then we do a full hour's practice flowing through that line. Amazing for your personal practice, but also it's gonna give you seven hours of CPD, Yep, seven hours of CPD, continual professional development, and so much inspiration. In the five weeks, we cover 10 meridian lines. So that is going to give you so much inspiration for your teaching. It is starting on the 11th of April, but you can do it on demand anytime. It's on Zoom, Thursday evening, 6.30 till... 7.45, but you can do it anytime. You get the replays, lifetime access, you get a workbook. Um, so you can do it whenever you like. It starts on the 11th of April for five weeks. I'm going to give you a link to that, although you can find it on my website as well. So I'd absolutely love you to come and do the Energize You Yoga and Meridians five-week online course. It is going to invigorate your personal practice, and it's going to really invigorate and inspire your teaching practice. If you're watching this video or listening to the podcast after the 11th of April and you want to do it, remember you can do it on demand. So you can just message me whenever and say, you know that course, I want to do it and I'll send you all of the videos and you can do it at your own time. If you're in the Facebook group, put your comments, questions in there. If you're on the podcast, you can reach out to me on social media with any questions. <clears throat> 
But if you have liked today, drop me a comment, share the podcast, share a link to the group. It really helps this information inspire more teachers. And we are a big, wonderful community together. So thank you for being here today. I'll go and check in the comments next and I'll see you again soon. Thank you, lovelies. Bye for now.